Uh, my name is Stan Shapiro. Thank you so much, all of you, for being here tonight. And along with Dennis Bidwell, I'm one of the founders of Northampton Connects. Uh, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about Northampton Connects and about our plan for tonight's forum. <coughs> Uh, and also, I'd like to thank JFK for making this room available. Uh, so tonight, this is a chance for all of us to talk with people who we did not come with or who we may not know. Uh, Northampton Connects is a new organization dedicated to providing forums to encourage community conversations and mutual understanding among Northampton residents with varied experiences and points of view. In a time where debate in our country is characterized by anger, hatefulness, bigotry, and polarization, our goal is to create interactions where people can talk to and listen to each other with respect. Northampton Connects grew out of a community meeting in Ward 2 last October. Ward 2 in Northampton, for those of you not from Northampton. A large part of that community meeting was devoted to people's concerns one way or another about the nature of the camera debate downtown and what could be done to encourage more respectful conversations about contentious topics, especially amongst people who may disagree. As a city councilor, Dennis, uh, my co-founder, was challenged by several present to address the polarizing tone evident in some of the debate. Although we did not necessarily agree about the issue itself, the two of us have worked to develop this project. In January, we convened a small planning group. This group has included individuals representing a broad range of perspectives and backgrounds, some of whom we will see up here tonight. The first topic we chose to address and discuss is downtown Northampton, because it has been the subject of many contentious issues and many different views and opinions over the last few years. Future community conversations may focus on other issues of import to downtown or other issues being debated in our city. Our goal is to welcome all values and all points of view. We realize this is a work in progress. For instance, we reached out to many in our community who either could not or, or did not choose to participate tonight. We also know that by holding our first forum in Florence, it makes it difficult for some to attend. And just so you're aware, we did try to hold this forum downtown, about downtown, but could not find a suitable venue for the state or for a price we would pay. We know that we'll only be more successful in the future as we vary locales and scheduled times for programs. Our plan for tonight, and there are agendas on each table, we're going to start tonight's discussion with a facilitated panel of some residents with with an interest in downtown Northampton. This will take about 40 minutes, and there won't be questions during this period. That will be followed by discussions at each table focused on the same questions. A trained facilitator has been planted at each table to help guide the conversation. Each table group will then be asked to give a very brief report, reporting about one thing that was discussed, with suggestions for us to, about how to follow up. <coughs> And we'll end with a brief wrap-up and plan to be done by 9. And now my colleague Dennis Bidwell, where's Dennis? Right behind you. We'll add a few words and introduce our panel. Thank, thank you, Stan. And I have to say it's been a real pleasure to, to team up with uh, Stan in this uh, experiment that you're all participating in tonight. Thank you for so many folks. About five of seven, we were wondering. But uh, as predicted, everybody showed up between 7 and 7.10, and it's, it's great to see uh, some familiar faces and a lot of folks who've not been involved in these discussions before, so thank you so much for being here. Um, I wanted to address one question that Stan and I have uh, been asked several times, and that is, with other forums and venues for discussion in, in, in town, in Northampton, why, why, why another one, and, and, and why this one? And the answer is that other more other public forums, and folks talk a lot about city council meetings, have their have their place, but they have sort of some inherent limitations. Other other public meetings are set up more to accommodate, in in many cases, more of a uh, an, an advocacy and uh, trying to convince one another of the correctness of one's position. And those forums, including city council meetings, 
do not provide, they're just because they're not set up that way, an opportunity for folks to sit across the table from one another, eye to eye, and try to understand where one another is coming from a little bit. So we hope to do that tonight with the benefit of facilitators who stand at every table who will be trying to keep the focus not on advocacy and argumentation, but on just uh, understanding one another's point of view, where you're coming from, that's the, and, and listening. That's the, that's the whole point of this. Um, the other thing is that as a legislative body, city council generally doesn't deal with issues until they're shaped in the form of a resolution or an ordinance where by its very nature you are soon expected as a counselor or generally as somebody coming to speak, are you for or against it? So in some cases the very structure of it almost builds in a little polarization from the start. So this is an opportunity to step away from that. Um, I do want to acknowledge, speaking of city council, two of my colleagues on council are here. Jim Nash from Ward 3 is here. Marianne Labarge, we're in Marianne's Ward 6 right here. Good to be here. Um, but we're all taking off our city council hats for the night. We're just, we're just here to participate in, in conversation like everyone else. Um, I want to add to Stan's thank yous. Thank yous to NCTV, Northampton Community Television. Um, and, and Jen Ramsey, media wizard, there she is, right there in the middle of things. And this will, it's, it's being uh, videoed for broadcast. Uh, starting tomorrow on NorthamptonTV.org, you can find it. NorthamptonTV.org starting tomorrow. <coughs> what you see here today will be available then, so spread the word. Um, so what I want to do now is to extend special thanks to our panelists and, and, and introduce them as I am doing so. And I'll, I'll, I'll do it starting from your right, uh, Rabbi Justin David from Congregation, Congregation of B'nai Israel. And I should mention that all of these folks have been participants in the, this planning process that, that uh, Stan was describing. <coughs> we appreciate their input there as well as their participation tonight. Booker Bush is a member of the Human Rights Commission. Jonathan Goldman, uh, a Hamp High grad who is now a Brandeis student the youngest member of the State Democratic Committee. Good going, Jonathan. And let's, I want to be sure I've got this right, co-founder of the Right to Immigration Institute. Uh, next to him is Peter I, <coughs> former, former pastor of First Churches in Northampton. Next to him, Nancy Cowan, the owner of Happy, Happy Valley Gifts. <coughs> and next to Nancy, Judy Harrell, owner of Harrell's Ice Cream. <coughs> and uh, Pastor Steph Smith of Cathedral in the Night. So uh, I know I appreciate, and I'm sure you will too, their, their willingness to sit up here in front of a group and talk about uh, issues involving downtown Northampton. <coughs> and thanks as well to other members of our planning group, uh, that, and that includes Jenny Fleming Ives, who can't be here tonight, Stephanie Zimbalist, who has been helping out in various ways and is also going to be a facilitator, and Rebecca Robbins. Um, so that all that leaves is to introduce to you Paula Green who will take it from here as our facilitator. Uh, Paula, many of you know, is the founder of the Karuna Center for Peace Building. She is Professor uh, Emerita, I guess is the status, at the uh, School for International Training in uh, Brattleboro. And you may know her as recently having led the effort that has been called Hands Across the Hills, which is where she and others have brought together progressives from Leverett with primarily Trump supporters from coal country Kentucky to come together and try to understand how you got to be that way, basically. And we figured if she can do that, <laughs> and if she can work, if she can help to bridge over divides in Rwanda and the Middle East and in Serbia and in South Africa, then maybe she's ready for Northampton. <laughs> so, so now I'd like to turn it over to Paula who's going to take it from here. make it tougher. <laughs> so, so this is a community conversation. And I guess the question I want to pose is, what is a community conversation? A community conversation is a way to have what may be an old conversation on a very familiar topic, such as downtown Northampton, in a new way. And what I learned in my work overseas is that if people had the old conversation, the usual first question is, why did you start the war? So it's a question of one side blaming another side. 
And in a community conversation, in a dialogue format, we try to move away from blame and move into finding collaboration and mutuality in the hope that we can then find solutions later on after the dialogue that are satisfactory to all the different sides. Um, it's a way to get many voices into the room, and so much of our evening will be your voices at your tables, in your circles, having a chance to share your own experiences and, um, and viewpoints. It's a community conversation is structured. The old conversation is not structured, and it leads to a lot of debate and a sense of I'm right and not listening and putting the other person down to make your points, interrupting. And a facilitated dialogue conversation is meant to slow everything down so that people can take in other viewpoints, can listen more deeply than we listen in most conversations, can understand that people with very different experiences have different stories to tell, that all the stories are legitimate, and that we have to live with the paradox of different perceptions different outcomes, and try to find a way through to a peaceful solution to our problems. In, in our case, a peaceful, prosperous, and welcoming downtown Northampton. We're not going to solve the problems tonight. We're going to lift them up in a new way so that people can hear each other, and that will hopefully move the community toward those solutions. Um, we learn to build bridges, and hopefully to increase our tolerance. And what I find is if we do this kind of deep listening, we have aha moments when we can say, oh, I get it. Something new is coming into me. The experience working with the um, people from Kentucky was very much that for me. I had never met this kind of, this group of people before. I'd never been to Kentucky before. It was not quite as different as um, Rwanda or Nepal, but it was certainly quite different. Um, for us to meet them, and there were so many moments of aha and understanding why they voted the way they did, why they think the way they did, what their lives have been like, and we have that in our own communities. We have many different kinds of lives and many different kinds of perceptions and issues. So that's what I'm hoping we're going to do. In order to do that, we always set up guidelines for communication. And I'm going to have Stan Scribe now I'm going to ask you what would make it possible for you to have a meaningful conversation at your table tonight, to feel safe, to feel heard, to feel cared about. What would be something for you, anybody in the room? Yes, Terry. No interruptions. Not interrupting. So we give a chance for people to speak. Somebody else? Yes, please. Try to keep it positive. Good. Try to keep it positive. Certainly not attacking other people. Please. Don't abuse the non-interruptions. Have there be a way that people can maybe say, you know, uh, right, can we okay. get in? So another way of saying that is to share the air time, to realize yeah. the time is short and people speak there and then there. Please. Um, some sort of time limit. On time, time guidance, OK? Yes. Assume positive intent. That's very nice. Assume that people here mean well. Nobody's coming to beat us up. <coughs> people are coming to listen and learn, to open their hearts, to have a new experience. So assume good intentions. These are I statements. Act, absolutely. Speak for yourself. Please do not speak as a representative of anybody or anything. I statements. Speak for yourself. My experience. My perception. My life. I'd like to add, um, turn your cell phones off, please. Um, cell phones are very interruptive in a dialogue because it's not really possible to multitask and listen to a person speaking intimately when you're also trying to check your phone. And we like um, the kind of confidentiality that means that we don't report out what an individual says, um, either by the form of gossip or to the press. Talk about the event, talk about what you learned, but don't say, this is what Joan said, or this is what, what uh, John said. So it's kind of non-attribution. Anything else? We have agreement on these? Okay, good. So that means at your table, 
Um, if the ground rules are not um, working in some way, your facilitator will remind you. And if that happens on the panel, which I'm going to facilitate, I'll remind the panel. So here's what's going to happen. The panelists are going to be asked a question. You're going to have the same question to be asked later. And each panelist is going to have three minutes to answer. That's very short, but that's what we're going to stick to. So I'm going to put up a sign when we've spoken for two minutes to remind you that you have one minute more and ask that you, um, you honor that as well. You may want very much to interrupt. Take a deep breath. <laughs> and listen, you will have your chance to speak at your table. That's the way we'll get everybody to participate. So the question we're going to ask you is to share a story, a memory, an impression, a feeling, whatever it is that you want to share um, about your love for downtown Northampton, what you care about about downtown Northampton, and what you think more needs to be done to make it a welcoming place for everybody. So I'm going to repeat it. Share a feeling, an impression, a brief story, an experience related to downtown Northampton that illustrates what you care for about it and reflect on what you think might be even a more inclusive, welcoming, comfortable downtown for everybody. So we're going to start with anybody who wants to start here and um, then we'll just go on. So, which of my brave panelists is going to start? Uh, no, you go start. Oh, no, no. after you. No, let's not <laughs> fight about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody, somebody has to start. I'm Nancy Cowan, and I don't have a single story to talk about. I've been here. Oh, I forgot that. <laughs> I, I've been here a long time, so I don't have one story to tell. I've seen many stories. But what I do have is a lot of impressions of downtown in Northampton. First of all, it's a very special place. And it's clear that people wouldn't be here on whatever side of anything they're on if, if they didn't agree with that. We agree that it is. The second thing is that the people here are so willing. Willingness is a word that really comes to mind here, to participate, to volunteer in programs. Look around everywhere. The place is full of people who want to participate and want to keep it special. The level of cooperation that's positive here is extraordinary. You don't see that in so many other places. You truly don't. A thing, another thing about Northampton is this wonderful walking downtown that we have. You don't see that. It's not interrupted by other things. It's a true walking downtown, which means also that the experience of walking downtown is something that people seek out. Historically, they've come from a lot of other towns, all kinds of other places, looking for that. And when they have, they've met this welcoming attitude. Over and over and over, we hear it in the store. But they come in and we go, oh, welcome to the valley. And they go, I can't believe it. People are so friendly here. A car stopped. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when um, Eva and her husband, from, Will, from uh, Country Comfort first came here, they said they thought they had landed in paradise. The first night they were here, they were given proper boots and things because they still had their urban outfits on and a place to spend the night. They had never been to a place like this. I wanted to come back and be that again rather than have the kind of partisanship that has been prevalent recently. I want us to remember how special this place is, how cooperative people can be, how everybody wants to work for the good of the whole, how people here are open-minded. That's what makes this a progressive kind of a haven. But we don't want to be having um, negative things within that progressive community. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking, the kind of thing that's happened, at least it is for me. You know, my, children were born here, I was married here, all that kind of stuff. Um, I, wanted, I want us to come together again and to understand that people with whom, people who may have disagreements about one issue and another, all have the same motive, and that is to try to work for the good of the whole and to try to make it better, to try to have Northampton be that kind of special place that we all know and love. Thank Those you. are my impressions Thank of you. Northampton. Thank you. Peter was next. Um, my favorite thing to do in Northampton is every morning I walk uh, all the way down into Northampton, uh, all the way to the Bridge Street School. And I sometimes do it three times a day now because my 
uh, grandson goes to the Bridge Street School. Um, but I loved this walk into downtown Northampton, and I loved doing it. Um, and I love the um, organizational diversity that I experience. I, I see the students at Smith College. I go past the Helen Hills Chapel, past <coughs> the old St. Mary's, past Edwards Church, uh, and remember the Advent walk days that we all did together. I stop at uh, State Street, get my newspaper, the Gazette. Uh, I then head down towards the um, homeless shelter um, where, where the homeless are in the wintertime. Uh, I love the bookstores in Northampton, so sometimes I'll go over to Broadside Books. I love the coffee shops. Um, there's nothing better than Woodstar and Haymarket along the way going through Northampton. I love the fact that um, you have organizations like Safe Passage in downtown Northampton, Tapestry Health, uh, where my wife works, um, and you have the Needle Exchange program here. It's this rich diversity. First Churches has almost 13 um, AA groups to go in and out of the church and OA groups to go in and out of the church. Uh, Steph has her cathedral in the night, and there's a lot of people just out in front of First Churches when you go down there. Uh, there's Kathy Cross, um, where all my four girls have shopped over the years. Um, and. And then there's Harold's, where they've worked um, uh, and given me free ice cream, uh, Judy. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Special friend. <laughs> um, and then I finally make my way to the, uh, the um, Pioneer Valley's Worker Center to stop in and see how they're doing, and then over to um, the um, uh, WHMP to be with Bill Newman every Thursday. Um, and what I like about Northampton so much is this, this tapestry of organizational diversity all next to each other, lawyers, offices, next to the, the homeless center, um, all these different groups that are all right closely <coughs> packed together. So it, I, I, I just hate it when people say things like, well, the merchants are angry with the street people, and the street people are angry with the merchants. Because I just see all of Northampton, and I love it so much as this web, this tapestry that's woven together in such a beautiful way. And the entire city, from, from the start, uh, the way this city was conceived in this big comma by the early settlers, the way the people in 1850, all the way to the turn of the century, built these enormously beautiful, beautiful buildings that, that make that huge, uh, wonderful setting for, for, for why I think Northampton is the most attractive city in America. <laughs> but I have two concerns. <laughs> two concerns, and I'm going to share them with you because uh, I know I'm going to get some feedback tonight. One is the street people on the street of the sidewalks. You know, those sidewalks, they, they were built by the same people that built the Academy of Music and City Hall. They're beautiful sidewalks, and I believe everyone has access to the sidewalks. But the street people, a lot of my people who have attended first churches have actually ended up on the street. Uh, and so some of the street people that you don't like were in Sunday school with my Sunday school teachers at first churches. Uh, and some of the even adults that are out there uh, were part of the staff of First Churches. And so we all have connections to the street people that run deep. And I've said, since I've been in Northampton, that anyone who doesn't have a place to go when they have a funeral uh, can always have their funeral in First Churches. And I've always been available. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and the other is, the Pioneer Valley Workers' Center and the issue of immigrants. I've got to talk about this just for a minute. The mayor met with uh, about 45 uh, undocumented immigrants last week, and they were so scared. They were so scared. People from El Salvador, people from Nicaragua, people from El Salvador. They were so scared about being exported. The, the, the ice, they're, they're terrified, terrified. It, it's just heartbreaking 
to be in a room with 45 undocumented immigrants and to see their fear and their terror as to what ICE is doing in our country today. And we've got to be able to support them. Once a preacher, always a preacher. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize to all of you. He's good. He's good. <laughs> but the preacher lives in him. Back to three minute, please. <laughs> I won't preach. Uh, I'm Steph Smith. I'm the pastor of Cathedral tonight. If you haven't heard of us, I really don't want to stand Okay, up. don't stand up. Sorry, if you can't, do you want me to stand? I just yeah. would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. People can't see you. I'm going to pull my notebook then. Um, so if you haven't heard of us, we are an outdoor church. We meet in front of First Churches uh, Sunday nights. Um, uh, and we have dinner together as well. So please come join us anytime for either of those. Um, but a lot of our community is, uh, that comes to Cathedral is experiencing homelessness and poverty. Really important, language isn't gonna fix everything, but it does do something. They're not the homeless. They're people experiencing homelessness and poverty. We're not the street church, you know, we are on the street, but we're not a homeless church. And so I a little bit am, I feel like I have to lift up some of their concerns as well. And, um, but I wanna share with you my experience just Saturday night um, downtown. I was going downtown with my family and my friends to go to a show um, at the Academy of Music. And I went out to dinner and was just walking around and man, Friday night in Northampton is busy. Or is this it was Saturday night? It's busy and there's a lot of people and everyone's going to shows and going to restaurants and that kind of thing. And I love that. I love, I got my coffee cup. I love this place and all the shops and the energy and the arts of this town. So I'm just sort of in my little space, but my community, many of whom don't have houses, their, their place to be is downtown on the street. So here I am in my like happy bubble of going to the comedy show and grabbing a cup of coffee before the show, and my community is standing on a street corner because someone just died of an overdose. And they're panhandling, those panhandlers, right? They're panhandling to raise money for food for his memorial. And they're grieving on the sidewalk because they don't have homes or churches to be, to grieve. And here I am in my happy little bubble of downtown Northampton and then my heart is broken because of an overdose and the loss of a good friend and someone I loved who was a great writer and a poet and a great thinker. Right on Main Street, right out, you can probably, I don't know if it got washed away in the rain, but you can see the memorial right there in front of Haymarket. This is my downtown. I feel like um, what I love about downtown is also what breaks my heart, because everybody is all together in one place, but we don't always see each other. And if you were downtown on Saturday, I don't know if you noticed, if you even noticed, and, and this isn't to say you should have noticed, I just mean you might not know and have those connections but lots of people do, and my heart broke that night. We sort of have these two different worlds kind of colliding sometimes, um, and that's really heartbreaking and hard and awesome and messy, um, all together in one place. Um, but then there's great moments where we serve a meal every night, and it takes a lot to serve a meal to, sometimes in the summer, over 100 people. And different churches from all over the valley, all over Massachusetts, all over Connecticut, come to, to Northampton every week to have dinner and worship and be with one another. And I always tell people, thanks for bringing the food, which is awesome, but the biggest gift you bring is yourself. I really believe what changes people's lives are not the stuff, it's the people. It's the relationships, and so we are all about building those relationships. Some of the things that I think are about amazing about Northampton, I have never been part of a town that has so much affordable housing and shelter beds, which is great, and we're not done, because there's not enough beds for addiction. There's not enough beds for mental health. There's not enough community walking with people. We can get someone housing, but who walks with them to keep that housing, to find work, to keep that job? And, um, but then there's these amazing connections. We get ice cream from Harold's, and food from Roberto's, and local burger, and State Street, and uh, we get to hang out at Haymarket every week. And so it's those connections that really kind of bring us together, and um, I hope we can keep building on that.
two preachers in a row. <laughs> Very good preachers. You promised. Um, try to keep to your three minutes, please. I'd like you to have a chance to react to each other and ask each other questions and comments, and I don't want to lose that, but we might. So please try to speak to your three minutes. Booker is next. Um, hi, I'm Booker Bush. Um, I'm the spouse of a preacher. Um, <laughs> the reason I, I, I think I'm actually the newest person in Northampton because I've only been here since 2010. I'm here because I was dragged here because my wife is the UU minister here in town. Um, so I was dragged here, didn't work for a while, I'm dressed like a doctor because um, that's what I do during the day in Springfield. And when I moved here, I didn't work and I tried to just get to know Northampton. And how do you get to know Northampton? You sit in coffee shops. <laughs> you sit in coffee shops and you go from coffee shop to coffee shop trying to figure out which one feels good. And one special thing about Northampton is um, I didn't feel out of place in any of the coffee shops I went to. And that's different than being in Boston. Um, you can feel like you don't belong despite the name of a bar. Um, you don't feel like you don't belong. So I really like that. And I tried to get into the vibe of each place. And the special story was one of the places I was sitting in, this just happened. A young man walked up to me while he was sitting there, and I was dressed to go to work, so I was wearing stuff that, like this. And he walked up and said, you look very calm, and you look like you understand what's happening in the world. <laughs> and I was saying, uh-oh. <laughs> I'm about to be solicited. <laughs> and then actually, he just sat down and talked and said, it, it turned out he was a psychology student at Elms, and he just wanted to talk. He happened to be a young man of color, and that might have been the reason he wanted to talk with me. And that was really special. That hadn't happened to me before. Here's the other side. I love walking to Northampton, but I've got to spend a few minutes deciding who am I going to give money to when I walk around. I've got to decide which side of the street I'm going to walk on because I want to avoid some people who are on the street and I like seeing other people on the street. And that's inconvenient that I need to do that. Um, and, and I know, I don't think I'm the only person in the room who does that. Maybe I'm the only person who's willing to say it out loud. But, and I think that's one of, the, one of our challenges is how do we sit with that? Because I'm not going to stop coming to Northampton. It's just I've made a plan of which side will I, which side of the street will I walk down, and which side I won't. Who will I give to? Who will I not? Who will I pay attention to? Who I don't have the energy left to pay attention to? And that's hard. And you know, it's one of those hard things about the place. I think neat places attract people who don't have places to live. It's one of the special, I, before I was here I was in Boston and before that I grew up in Berkeley. And Berkeley is a little similar to Northampton. A little to the right, but it's similar. <laughs> and, uh, it's, uh, but Berkeley has this same problem. It, it's really hard now to walk down Telegraph Ave. It's really hard to spend time in People's Park. Those places are very difficult places to be in now because of who needs to be there. So it's one of the things I hope we have more time to talk about. Thank you. Stay away from New Delhi, it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Judy. Hi. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I think pretty much everybody else has started to talk about. Um, I've been in Northampton for a very long time. This is pretty close to 40 years. And we have been in business for almost that long now. And we've watched the changes through Northampton, which is my favorite place to be. I chose to come to Northampton. I come from New Jersey. I, I can't even tell you how much I dislike where I come from in so many ways. But I chose to come to college up here, and I stayed. Um, one of the things I loved about Northampton was the camaraderie of all of the people that walk around downtown. And that includes the homeless people that are downtown. Um, I have a friend who I'm going to call Mitchell. Mitchell is a homeless per or was a homeless person. He's no longer homeless. He did get help recently from the VA, which is great. 
Um, he would sit on the bench and look down and never make eye contact with anybody. And one day I just stopped, sat next to him and said, are you okay? And he's like, yes, I'm okay. I said, are you sure you're okay? Yes, I'm sure I'm okay. And he shakes and he's very quiet and he doesn't make eye contact. And I said, are you hungry? I'm going to lunch. Would you like to join me? And he looked at my eyes, into my eyes, and he said, yes, I would love that. So we got up to, and we went down to the Chinese place in the middle of Main Street. He ordered a plate of vegetables and rice. And we ate, we talked for about an hour and a half to find out he's a college graduate, he was an engineer. He was working, he developed Addison's disease. He was unable to work any longer. And he was also a vet, a vet and wasn't getting benefits because he wasn't sure how to navigate the system. We helped him navigate the system. He now has money coming in, he's found a place to live, he's much happier, he's also getting medication. He's looking for a job, okay? So there are people downtown that have stories and those stories are fascinating. And if you take the time to stop and talk with them, you'll find out that there's a lot of people that you have things in common with that you don't know you have com in common with. On the other side of the coin, there are people that are less than kind, um, that I've had customers tell me stories about um, them being harassed, some disabled people being harassed on Main Street. I've had, personally, I've picked up hypodermic needles in the cracks in the sidewalks. Those scare me especially for the children that walk around downtown who could not know what it is and pick it up. Um, so there's those kinds of issues as well. But I also know that I could sit on one of the benches in Northampton and people will come up and they'll chat and they'll talk and they'll tell me about their day and I'll tell them about my day. And I could shop in the stores and not be scared and feel comfortable. And it's, it's just a wonderful place. And I think that there is common ground in, for everyone downtown Northampton. And there are solutions to some of the issues that we do have that would be good for everyone. Thank you. It's a beautiful story. And it reminds me that community conversations are not just in structures like this. They're also on the street. That we can, we can have a conversation on the street with incredible results. So we have Justin and Jonathan, and I don't know which order you want to go in, Justin. You mentioned me it. first, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I could tell you about all the pizzas that I've had downtown and my opinions on each and all the books that I've bought at Booklink and at Broadside and The Raven and um, all the beautiful gifts of downtown. Uh, just a, a few short um, anecdotes, reflections. One is uh, downtown is where I took my children to their first protest that they could understand. Um, the uh, Tibetan community was gathering, this was about 11 or 12 years ago, uh, to protest violence against uh, Tibetans in China. And um, we went down to the protest and it was all Tibetans and me and my wife and our two kids. And we walked all the way around downtown. Uh, another story, and these are, these are random but they're so different from each other um, and, and for reasons that I don't understand, just really important to me. Uh, another was, uh, it was a beautiful summer day um, and uh, we were walking downtown and right around the corner from Harold's, which by the way I have to say I research ice cream all over the world and Harold's still <laughs> has the best cone in store. Uh, but there, there was a gentleman in his mid-twenties or so and he was standing on the corner and he had a sign that said something like, street philosopher. <laughs> yeah, and he may, may have even said $5 or something like that. And he was wearing a hat and he was holding a pipe, not smoking, but just holding it. So I asked him, so I went up to him and I said, so let's philosophize. And he started kind of going off about the concept of nothing. And it was really bad philosophy, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and we talked and I was separated from $5 of my hard and earned money and it was perfectly happy to do that. Um, but I think the really serious reflection for me is about um, who's visible downtown and who's invisible. Um, because I, I enjoy downtown as someone with a life of great privilege. 
I go into the stores, it's my happy place, I walk around, I'm served, I'm, it's, it's one of the few places where I can go when I'm actually not working. Um, and there are uh, restaurants that I've gone to for, God knows, at least a decade, Amanu's, Mosaic, um, Woodstar, I love Woodstar, I love Hungry Ghost, I love Haymarket because I know the people who own them and I know a bit about their stories and what they stand for and it means so much to me. Um, but here's the thing, also when I go, um, not so much into Woodstar or, or Haymarket, but particularly Amanu's and Mosaic, um, there are gentlemen who work the grill there and who sweep up and who are behind the counter who've been there for years. And I know uh, Abid and Hafiz, and we've talked a lot, but I've never talked with the gentlemen in the kitchen. I don't know their names and I don't know their stories. Um, over the past year or so, um, it's been a great blessing to be more involved with the Pioneer Valley Worker Center and um, their hour, I should say, uh, work <coughs> on uh, immigration and, and uh, helping folks who are undocumented. And um, several times I've had the great privilege of going to their Wednesday night workers' meetings where folks who live in the community will share their stories, there's an agenda, and it's all in Spanish and translated for people like me very generously. And I have to say, those, those meetings, you know, to the extent that I have any insight into folks around Northampton whose lives I don't know, that's where I've gotten any glimpse of insight into that. And if there's one thing that I think that could make our town stronger and more whole, it's to give more opportunities for those who are not as visible as others of us are. So, uh, maybe I was terribly naive, but until I was probably in high school, I didn't have that much of a conception of what all these issues that the grown-ups were talking about in Northampton. Um, but my senior year, I was the co-chair of the Mayor's Youth Commission, and I had the awesome privilege of working with a lot of artists across the Pioneer Valley and a group of other students on painting the benches in downtown Northampton. You can still see them you know, every time you walk down a Main Street. And on our first day, when we were going to clean the benches, I was working one of the benches right in front of uh, La Vera Cusana, and uh, a guy walked up to me, early 60s, and he said, uh, you know, what are you guys working on? I explained to the project, I explained it was a response to the benches having been taken away, and we wanted to make downtown a more welcoming place and really show that this is a, something that's shared for everyone, and that's, it, it's an art piece within our community. And, and he said, well, okay, I, I guess you can use my bench for the day then if you're gonna make it a little more beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes on to explain, he points up, I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with, but on the top of the Moshi Moshi building, there's this white clock. Um, and there's really in intricate brickwork around it. And he explained how he had done that, um, I mean, a decade earlier or something, he had been a construction worker, and he explained how then he had hurt his back when he had worked on that project, and because he had to take a little bit of time off, he ended up being fired from his job, and he was around 55 at the time, and, I mean, being 55 and trying to find someone who wants to hire you to do construction work and picking up heavier things, people are gonna look at you and they're gonna say, that's not what you're able to do and he wasn't able to find work in what he had spent his entire life being an expert in. And going off of what uh, Rabbi David said and also uh, Pastor Steph is, is two things here, right? There's one that there's something we need to do better on. We need to do better on investing in the things that bring people together. I go to school now at Brandeis and I do political work across the state and everywhere I go everyone's like, Oh, I love walking down Main Street and doing shopping there. We all know that it's special, but what makes it special is when we invest in that, not when we take away the benches, not when we try and take away things from downtown. It's trying to put more into those services because benches seemed really simple, but it's something that I can talk about with someone in Boston and they know about the colored benches we have in Northampton. When we invest in those things that aren't just for ourselves, everyone feels that. On the other side there, this is someone whose story I would have never really thought about as a senior in high school at Northampton High, you know, downtown, not quite downtown. The places students go to aren't necessarily the places where we're gonna interact with other people. This was a turning point in my sort of experience of thinking about a different story that someone else has. And I think it's important for us to have these conversations, but also think about what are these other stories, what are ways that have put ourselves into difficult positions, and what could those look like for other people as well. This both made me realize why it's important for us to improve, but also recognize what other people are going through as well. 
Thank you all of you for your thoughtfulness. We're going to take a little time now for our panelists to engage with each other. And we've got about 10 minutes or so and ask each other questions, comments on what people said, deepen your experience, add anything you want to do. Just pass the microphone back and forth so you're talking to each other and also talking to all of us. And it looks like you're eager to start. Well, yes. You know, I think there are some misconceptions about the business owners and the people who work in them in town here. We're not angry at the people on the street. No, no, no. Judy and we, many of us, do a lot of things to try to be helpful, things that are not apparent to you because they happen in our shops, whether it's keeping their things so they don't have to haul them around and they don't get stolen. Um, I have a back room where it's just been used for that many times. Mm -hmm. Whether it's, it's bandaging them after they, there's been some kind of altercation and we have first aid kits and that kind of stuff, or <coughs> buying food or collecting blankets and people go through blankets and socks and sweaters like crazy when they don't really have a home right and so somebody we gather those things. we do a lot to try to help but it's sad the thing is everybody needs a place to have a social network and people that they care about and who care about them and the only place if you don't have a home is on the street um, I lived in Texas a long time where they have almost clubhouses, places that people can go where there is a network and there is food and there are people who care. You know, almost some of them are 24 hours even, where you can be off the street without losing a sense of connectedness with people whom you know and, and who care about you. But I would just like to say that, yes, we care a lot. We all care a lot. There's a tremendous problem of people with addictions on the street. And we, too, get to know pretty well. We do as much as we can to help and get to work with them and, and talk with them and try to understand their stories. But addiction takes a long time to work on and to get over. And it takes places to be and people to guide you. And if you, you can get all the housing in the world, but you're going to lose it one after another after another. You're serial evictees if you have an active addiction problem very often. So I think we need to take a look at that. But I just want you to know that we're not greedy and we care about other people. <laughs> Thanks for adding that. And let's be, again, oh, oh, I'd like cookies. to suggest that you be in conversation with each other. Okay. Not, okay. No. I want you to talk about we the cookies. We just want to talk about the cookies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the cookies. I, I'm the peace on the street <coughs> lady where I live. And, and one of the main benches happens to be right in front of Happy Valley. Because it's the only bench that has a shade tree up there too, so it's the only place people can get out of the sun. And there are certain times of the month which are pretty, where the behavior is fairly aggressive because the, the checks come in and the drug dealers come in and that kind of thing. And I go down and, and I go, okay, let's have peace on the street. And if that doesn't work, I always have cookies in the store. And I bring out the cookies and I start passing the cookies around to everybody because it's not possible to curse and fight and carry on when some gray-haired lady's feeding you cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and Judy was saying she's seen that. It, it works, works like an action. Sure. I, I didn't know that, of course. But, you know, and, 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 it, and we have exchanges, you know. And it's also at the point where they say, oh, I need a cookie. Oops. You know, get out the where are the cookies kind of thing. And anyway, that's what they wanted me to tell you about was getting, <laughs> eating the cookies when things get rough out there. <laughs> Who wants to talk? Jonathan. Oh, yeah, yeah. So again, being in an interaction with each other here on the panel. Okay. So I don't know where everyone here necessarily lives, but I, I live over on you know in Florence, where you know for some you know I, I'm young and always going downtown and so on. But some people, I mean, I know that's not always as easy, even for my parents, for example. And sometimes I know there's this feeling, and I know I'm not alone for for people in Florence and for myself, where there's almost this disconnect where it's, you know, those are sort of issues going on downtown and, you know, people need to figure it out there. I'm wondering what thoughts some of you may have who, who live directly downtown or businesses downtown on how we can sort of bridge that divide between people who only have, you know, once every week an experience of going downtown and they don't hear those sorts of stories. Um, how we sort of bridge that as well. That's a, good That's a nice question. Good question. No How about a new block, Downtown Diaries? <laughs> you know, well, uh, no, I don't have an answer because I live in Florence, too. And, um, 
and I just have to go to Northampton on Sundays. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it's, um, that is sort of the end, because see, all of you have missed out. We've had a lot of discussions, and that's why it's a little hard to talk now, because we've also talked about, there's also old Northampton, new Northampton. Mm -hmm. There's sort of right. money Northampton and not money Northampton. Um, there's there's a sort of a lot, we've been getting to talk about this, and it's been quite rich and a lot of fun. And, and maybe if you figure it out, you can join us too. But it's, uh, we've discovered that there are these, why ever leave Florence? Because when I first moved to Northampton, I was, my orientation was you just go to the cup and top, and you don't even need those downtown uh, coffee shops. But I, I didn't like sitting with kids at Cup and Top. So it, it, it's, I mean, I think there are all kinds of, but I think it's a really key question. Um, you know, when I look at who's walking around in Northampton, it's younger, it's whiter, um, it's not as diverse. Yeah. Um, you gotta be able to walk. Um, there, isn't a, there aren't as many wheelchairs as other places where I spend my time. Um, and I don't think that's conscious. I just think it's what's easy and what's not easy. Um, and and, and the, even the story I told about being approached by the young man, that was at one of the juice bars in town where everything you buy, it costs at least $9. And that sort of selects who's in the room um, also. So it, um, that's one of the little divides that I see. I have I like it because there's also this funkiness on the street. So there's sort of the tension of what's going on outside and what's going on inside. But you know, I really come back to your point of not knowing who's in back um, and who's in front. Anybody else? Yeah. I was gonna I, ask you something actually. Please. Okay. <laughs> so um, I think that, if, am I correct that you've traveled to lots of different areas in, um, in your work? And I know Peter also, and Steph. Um, I, in, in what I've been noticing is that Northampton, in essence, is unusual as far as towns go. That most towns don't have the cohesiveness and the, the the business type and the welcomeness that most other biz most other areas have, and I've, I'm just sort of I've always kind of known it, but I'm recently become acutely aware. And in what I've also noticed is that um, that invisible population, that non, the ones you don't see specifically on the streets that are sort of in the background. Um, and those people that are like in fear for their their lives, basically, um, are in a lot of communities are being sort of targeted and being said, you know, like laws are being passed that they can't be on the street. And mm -hmm. is are there? Do we know why and how? I guess how Northampton became this more inclusive place? Is it stuff that the chamber did? Is it something that was, that occurred because of the people that own the businesses that they were welcoming? Anybody have any idea? It's like, a wonderful question. Yeah, how? So, I knew you had an answer for this. I, <laughs> you don't. I'm not, I'm not sure I have an answer. I mean, I, I have two, two thoughts and they both, they may appear contradictory, but they exist in my head simultaneously. One is that, um, whenever I go somewhere and I drive into town, it can be in, in the afternoon, it can be late at night, I breathe easier. It's so beautiful, there's so much that makes me happy here. I love everything about it. Um, and it feels exceptional. Uh, Northampton feels exceptional. To, downtown Northampton feels exceptional to me. At the same time, there's nothing exceptional about the kinds of um, structural inequalities that exist in Northampton that exist everywhere. So, you know, I, um, one, of the things that, one of the things that I really lament is, you know, my kids are one in college, one late in high school, and they both started out in um, preschool and uh, kindergarten in the early grades uh, at Jackson Street School. 
And when they were at Jackson Street School, both in their class and among the kids they played with after school were kids of all different backgrounds, African-American kids, um, Latino kids, kids from mixed uh, incomes. And um, of course, by, by the time they were in middle school, that was gone. And by the time they were in high school, they, had, you know, they didn't know where any of these other friends that they had earlier even were. So, so we're not exceptional. It's, we're beautiful. They're, I mean, you know, Harold's is the best ice cream I've ever had. But, um, but we're not exceptional, and I, and I think it's time to own up to that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to just try to answer that. When I came to Northampton in 1989, uh, I was told um, two things by um, the um, trustees of First Churches. Um, and I hope they'll forgive me for sharing this. They said to me, Peter, um, there's two things you have to do uh, here. You have to keep the front doors of First Churches locked all the time except on Sunday morning. Um, and the second thing is, don't ever talk to the press, especially the Daily Hampshire Gazette. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, Judy, I think um, a whole generation of us uh, who came to town back in the 80s and, and early 90s um, decided to, um, to just stop doing that kind of thing. And there was also this rigid dichotomy between old hamp and new no-ho. And again, um, a whole generation just started to resist that. And, and suddenly it just broke down totally. So you can't even tell new hamp and old hamp, the, the, the alliances uh, the friendships are so powerful now between all of us, New Hamp and Old Hamp. It's a totally different city from my point of view in terms of people socializing, people being out in the streets, people talking, than when I came in 1989. But I, I do, I think that's great. I mean, not great. I really heard what you said about people disappearing because they've been priced out of living here. I'm one of those people too. Yeah. Even when I was in my 50s, I had to have three housemates just to keep an apartment in town and it's only gotten worse. Mm -hmm. So that many of us mm -hmm. have, have had to move elsewhere because the, the pricing of Northampton is real people out. And I do know a lot of people who work behind the scenes and who work at things, but I've always been interested in that. and, and really tried to get to know folks in that. I've done a lot of that kind of work myself, so I, I, I really appreciate what they do and I understand it. But I, but I think the economic inequality here is growing all the time, to tell you the truth. As it unfortunately is everywhere in this country of ours. So it's going to be your turn now. We're going to ask our spokespersons to give us briefly one highlight. One highlight in one sentence. How, how's that? Mm. A highlight in one sentence. No run on sentences, of course. <laughs> and um, um, after you've done your, your sentence highlight, um, one suggestion, which could be either for follow-up on this topic or for another topic you'd like to see us have a community conversation about. And Susan, would you be willing to start? We'll just pass it along. Sure. Thank you. I failed because I'm the facilitator, and here I am. <laughs> you too. Both ends. My lovely group that were great. I know I'm going to do it anyway. So, highlight. Um, highlight came again and again as to the the fun of being downtown the fun and the enjoyment of the little things, um, the choice, the friendliness, and the camaraderie that comes with downtown Northampton. Uh, a couple of really, I thought, interesting topics for future conversation and exploration uh, was uh, the retail mix. And under that comes useful commodities, <laughs> which could perhaps attract more of the local people coming downtown instead of always worrying about cultivating the out-of-towners 
with the specialty shops, which are all great, which we need and we want, but we would also like the hardware stores and you know the underwear and the band-aids and the whatever movie theater and well definitely the movie theater and one other topic we were we felt was really lacking that could help in many many ways was a community room that organization northampton is built on social service organizations they're all eager active wanting to meet, get together. There are very few public places that we can meet. Well, um, I've actually been here less time than Booker because I moved here in 2015. Just had to get that up. But um, uh, at our table, the most positive thing that struck us was that not only did everybody have a lot of good things to say about Northampton, they were personally willing to invest in and help in finding ways to make it better. And the two ways that were the most notable, one was some kind of, call it a club room, call it a interface room, but a place where people of many different groups, particularly marginalized ones, have a comfortable place to go and hang out for a while, um, maybe get resources, maybe just visit and have a cup of coffee. Um, and then the other one, a suggestion that got a lot of oh yes, was maybe a couple more festivals. <laughs> can, I, can I just jump in? So also, we, we really welcome suggestions for this group, for Northampton Connects. Where would we go next with this process? We didn't get that far. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Robin. Um, <clears throat> I didn't take notes on my group. Um, Okay, so a highlight was hearing from someone who grew up here who uh, talked about um, the experience of being from a, a family of lower income, of diverse ethnicity, and the different ways of being treated when you're perceived as white versus a person of color by the police or by other people in Northampton. Um, we talked about the issue of diversity and both appreciating you know, the diversity around LGBT and the, the rainbow crosswalk and all that, but also the sort of lack of, of um, other kinds of diversity. And uh, we had someone from Greenfield who shared about the Stone Soup Coffee House in Greenfield, where there are, there's a conscious effort to get all different walks of life, from homeless people to just any other people, to all come together and share a meal, and it's all run by volunteers. And there was a lot of enthusiasm at our table for having something like that here. I know that I was saying, um, after working all day as a therapist, when I go downtown, I don't have a whole lot left, whether it's personally or financially, to give to someone on the street, and I hate how I feel when I ignore them. And what I really got was I wish they were here. So actually, the, what someone said, well, we had this dialogue at a time when people who are homeless couldn't be here because they have to be at the shelter by a certain time, something I wasn't aware of. So um, the idea of having a dialogue with people who are considered homeless or whatever term you want to use, some of the people who are not represented here now, I think would be a, a suggestion. That's a great idea. Um, thank you. Uh, um, I, I'd just like to begin just very briefly by thanking the organizers of this. I, I, th I think it was a terrific uh, thing that you did and uh, it sure, certainly got me out of the house. Um, <laughs> so I think I deserve all of so, so, so just building on what Robin said at, at my table, that's one of the other things we thought uh, was a good idea, was, was the phrase that we used was building bridges and uh, trying to make that connection uh, uh, with that population that's marginalized downtown. Uh, individually, we can all stop and try to ask them what their quote stories are, but, but that's not necessarily the same thing as coming together as communities because uh, whether you love them or hate them or anything in between, they, 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 they are a community, they're part of our community, and I think that they have an obligation as part of our community, if they're invited and if we can uh, uh, promote the right forum, to participate. Um, and uh, so I think we all agree that that was something that was worth uh, looking into and, and investigating. Um, and uh, we, we thought that this would be great if it was a monthly type of uh, forum. Um, I know it's a lot of work, um, 
Dennis and, and, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, Stan. 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 Um, and uh, um, we also, I think, uh, a highlight was that uh, something that came up in conversation was, was the, the way Northampton's changed over the last uh, 20 years or so. Uh, a lot of different words were used, but uh, economic uh, uh, stressors, growing pains, call it what you will, I think that uh, I think we all agree that, that we've been a, a little bit a, a victim of our own success, whether it's uh, by being prosperous and inclusive, uh, we're bound to attract you know, people who have no other place to go and need resources, or whether it's because a lot of the artistic community that uh, made Northampton great has been priced out. Uh, I think a, a theme was that, uh, and I like the idea of festivals, I mean, it does speak to this, but we need to uh, stop resting on our laurels uh, as, uh, as, as a, a little uh, city that was once, not too long ago, called the best small arts town in America. Uh, I, I think that we need to, uh, well, I think the, the table all agreed, we need to invest, uh, whether it's resources, financial, manpower, or otherwise, in trying to uh, in reinvigorate uh, the spirit of Northampton uh, and uh, uh, make sure that we don't uh, let what is so special about this community sort of slip through our fingers from uh, a lack of attention. And I, I guess by that we mean communal attention. And in that regard, this was a terrific start as, as far as uh, we were concerned. So it was very productive. And uh, uh, thank everybody for participating. So we just want to remind you of one sentence. It's <laughs> <laughs> got a long sentences. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> one sentence and suggestion. So my group was very was very interesting because there were people from that had just moved here very recently to people who had uh, lit, grown up here, moved away, come back, had come back, and others who had been here a long time or just a uh, you know a short period of time, not really long, but a significant period of time. So that was interesting, and what attracted people, especially, it was interesting hearing from people who just moved here because they. They liked things like the diagonal crosswalk where everybody crosses at the same time. And <laughs> some people like Forbes Library and all the cafes. And um, But uh, I think a lot of what was said by people before me was also said at my table. I don't want to go into it all again, but definitely the stressors put on the merchants and um, and the, the reasons that homeless people are, or that we have homeless people are is in part because of how attractive our town is um, and that we do need to um, figure out a way to address some of the issues and the economic disparities uh, and um, that it, it, it draws people to the town but then for some people it, 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 does, it has the opposite effect. So um, I think more conversation about that and there was an issue the issue of wanting a movie theater was brought up <laughs> as well. <laughs> a movie theater, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joanne. Um, I think the the uh, sort of highlight from our table, as everyone told their story, was the heterogeneity, not only of us, but of the marginalized or homeless people, um, and that uh, solutions can't shouldn't be oversimplified by assuming that all people who are on the street are the same, um, and recognizing that they all deserve compassion, but there may be different solutions for different groups. Some people need uh, care in a community center, and others maybe need to be dealt with from a police uh, perspective. In terms of um, future uh, work of this group, I think uh, there was an interest in maybe how could we educate all of us more and the community about various marginalized communities and that it doesn't only reside in the downtown Northampton and so we all need to understand all of the um, various people in need throughout our community and then also I think someone else raised this how do we become a more welcome community to people of color so for our group one thing that was really interesting for me and was a highlight was hearing about the intergenerational experiences that people had, particularly when people are talking about the Hamp NoHo thing. So if any of you guys have kids in Northampton, if you ask them if they know what that means, I promise they don't. I still don't know. So if someone could explain that to me, I'd love to hear. Um, and, and hearing about how that influenced each person's experience from different economic backgrounds or generational backgrounds um, and hearing about those different aspects. That was a real highlight hearing 
learning more about that experience of, of, of people who've been here for longer, shorter periods of time. For suggestions, um, they've all been touched on thus far, um, except for one, which is something that I feel very passionate about. Um, out of all my friends from high school that still live here in Northampton, as in they didn't go to college or they, whatever it is, uh, for people, I have one friend who is able to live in Northampton. Uh, anyone else is either experiencing homelessness or they weren't able to live here. And I think a discussion about how Northampton doesn't necessarily just need to be a place where you come back and raise your kids after you went to Northampton High School, but a place that's also welcoming um, when you are someone who is right out of high school or someone who's right out of college as well. So I don't need a microphone. Um, and uh, I, one of the things that we enjoyed at our table was that we actually did what we were asked to do, which is tell stories. We told, we told our stories uh, about what we had to um, say about being, liking Northampton. And it was very personal. It was very much an I statement. And it wasn't so much built on solving a problem or being smarter than anyone else about what is going wrong. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> I look around and I, I, I think I know half the people in this room. Um, so I know who's not here. And some of them, my neighbors, I, I almost felt an obligation to represent the views of some of my neighbors who won't come to these meetings. Because I knew we would all be saying the same thing. Um, uh, one of the people at our table brought up the um, interesting issue, which is just almost a tortured example of this, which is that there were people who were afraid to say they were for Hillary in Northampton because it was such a Bernie town. Um, so, I mean, you know, so uh, if you see where I'm going with that, um, I, I, I have been involved with all the populations that we're talking about who are needy. Uh, I know them. And I wish that we could make a point to, to get them here. And maybe it would be so before the shelter closes. Or let the shelter know <laughs> that there's a good reason why they're here, because they will let them stay. So that will go under the suggestions. Yeah, and, and that's, and I give a resounding um, yes to, to that same point. I, I really feel like everything's been said that I need to say, and what Steve just said was really where our group came out in terms of suggestions for going forward. I, P Peter I've no, Ives knows I love him, so this is not a disparaging comment, but and, and I, I'm happy to talk to you about the NoHo Hamp divide afterwards, because <laughs> that's what I think is a big part of what Steve's saying. It does. It has political repercussions, it has socioeconomic, it, lots of them. And then there's the diversity that's racial and um, ethnic in our community, and we're not all represented. So how to bridge that? How to get those people to come? Translators, babysit. You know, that I'd mentioned at my table. I've been trying to do this for 45 years, and it's an ongoing struggle. Um, and. Highlights were also stories. People told stories. The arts came up a lot as something that we have to be proud of. But at the same time, we're also pricing people out who can't afford to do their art here. Um, and we talked a lot about trying to come up with something in the realm of the community center that would pull on children especially. Getting people's kids out often brings people out. Um, and then making things more affordable. Affordable food, affordable housing, affordable rents, and... and um, uh, hardware stores and movie theaters. Um, yeah, so I'm done. Uh, our group really doesn't have too many additional things. We talked a lot about that idea of community, building community and different ways of doing that. And we all definitely talked about needing more younger voices here and finding a way to share the leadership maybe. One of the ideas that came um, was not just the topics. I mean, we talked about affordable housing and empty stores downtown and things like that um, as things of concern, um, drug addiction downtown, those things. Um, but maybe trying to figure out a way to model these kind of meetings where there's leadership, sorry, uh, maybe more shared leadership from parts of the community that aren't here. Mm -hmm. I left one out, which is transportation. We talked about having a meeting to talk about transportation, electric bikes, et cetera. Thanks to all of you. You can just stay right here. Um, we're going to wrap it up now. Stan's going to do a few closing comments. And, uh, and um, I want to thank everybody for coming. It's been a wonderful yeah. evening. Thank you, Paula. Thank you. We want to thank Paula and all of our panelists.
Chris and um, all of our facilitators for coming out. Some of you came from far away, like Leverett. <laughs> <laughs> and also to our spokespeople, thank you so much. Uh, so a lot of the same themes came out, and those were themes we, we expected to come out. Uh, so uh, we're, we're really going to be thinking over the next few weeks how to, how to move this forward. This is, this is just the beginning. And so first, if anyone would like to be part of this organization, part of this advisory committee for our organization, uh, we can always use some new blood, new ideas. So I, uh, if you're interested, talk to Dennis or talk to myself, and uh, we can keep it going. Uh, also, uh, if anybody can stay to help us break down the tables, you'd be most welcome. And finally, there is a little jar out there if anyone would like to drop any money into it to defray expenses, because we are going to be having more meetings. We have a few expenses. And thank you all so much for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.